since you asked for it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to trade options in a small account. I'll do this using some of my real life trades so you can see how I go about selling covered call and put options in a small account. Hello and welcome back to My Life of Learning. My name is Randy Perez. Please know that I am not a financial advisor and this video is not meant to be investment advice of any kind. I am, however, a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. Before we get started, I just ask one thing of you. Please hit the like button to support this channel. I'm about to give you some really awesome information that I know you're going to receive great benefit from. So if you appreciate the kind of material I provide for you on this channel, please support it by hitting the thumbs up like button. Thank you for that. Let's get started. Today I'm going to show you exactly how I sell covered call and put options in a small account. We're going to do this by looking at the details of four different positions we've been trading in over the past year. Here you see all the trades we've done in our first small account position. This account is a Roth IRA. It's a new account for us and I can only contribute $6,000 a year into this account so it is indeed a small account. Here are the trades that I did beginning on August 12th in Medical Properties, ticker symbol MPW. Briefly, here are a couple of reasons why I chose MPW. My primary goal in selling options and on occasion buying stock outright is to number one, protect our capital. It's not money that we're gambling with. The cash we've pulled together is money we want to protect while investing it in such a way that we get a solid return. Medical Properties Trust is almost a pure play on hospitals. No matter what happens, in good and tough economic times, we all need hospitals. This is a sector of the real estate world that will always be in demand. So as long as the company is run properly, it should consistently produce cash flow. Another nice thing about MPW is that its current price is under $23 per share. That's one reason why I chose Medical Properties to sell options in my small new retirement account. Let's discuss the trades I've done over the past eight months in my small account using this company. Here you see a list of all medical properties trades we've done in this account since August 12th. Let's talk through these trades using the medical properties chart so you can see how much and when we collected cash by selling put and covered call options in it. I think you'll see that even in a small account using what I consider a stable, solid, dividend paying company that have a lower price, you can still collect nice premium. We began selling put and covered call options in medical properties as you can see on the left on August 12th. We sold the $19 put options for 65 cents per share. About a month later, medical properties had dropped to around $17 per share. So on September 18th, we were assigned 100 shares of MPW at $19 per share. We immediately sold the November 3rd Friday of the month $19 covered call options and received $0.35 cents per share. Fast forward to November 19th, and with medical properties trading right at our short strike price of $19, we rolled that covered call option out to December for an additional 37 cents per share. Fast forward three weeks and the covered call option was assigned so the stock was called away from us and we immediately sold the January $20 put options for 47 cents per share. Notice that we rolled the strike price up by a dollar. I felt comfortable doing this because the technicals supported this new higher short strike price put option. Then on January 16th, that short put option expired worthless. So five days later, we sold the March 21st put options for 65 cents per share. On March 18th, we rolled that $21 put option out to April for an additional 35 cents per share. Finally, on April 17th, the third Friday of the month, the April $21 put option expired worthless. Now we're looking for another opportunity to sell a new put option in medical properties if it were to come back down to around that $22 per share area. In all, as you can see here in the yellow box, since August 12th of last year, or about eight and a quarter months ago, we have collected $2.84 per share by selling put, and then once the stock was put into our account, selling covered call options in medical properties. That equates to approximately 20.7% annualized non-leveraged cash on cash return. And note that I didn't say anything about dividends. The reason is that when the stock was put into our account as a result of the put options that we had sold back on September 18th, the stock was actually called away from us right at the ex-dividend date, which was December 9th. So we actually did not receive any dividends in medical properties over this 11 plus month time period. If we had, then the return would have been even higher. So here's an example of a stock that at most, when you're selling the $21 puts, if you did one contract, which equates to 100 shares of stock, then at most you would need $21 times 
times 100 shares or $2,100 cash in your account to be able to do a trade like this without using any leverage at all. One challenge with a small account is that as you see and hear people talk about how much money they're making and the dollar figures, they're so big compared to the relatively smaller amounts that you're receiving by trading with a small account, just remember that even those larger accounts, at one point, most likely they were started out as a smaller account. And as you can see, selling put and covered call options is an excellent way to, over time, turn a small account into a larger account. And along the way, as you progress in your option education, you'll be able to make mistakes without losing a huge sum of money that you might lose if you had a large account. Then once your account size has grown to a large account, you will have learned from your mistakes and hopefully you'll be able to minimize those new mistakes. So you're able to consistently generate awesome returns and cash flow in your account. The second trade I want to share with you is in Flowers Foods, ticker symbol FLO. Flowers is best known for its breads and snack cakes as well as tortillas. They're in the consumer defensive or non-cyclical sector. In addition to Flowers being a solid, stable, mature, dividend paying company that's fairly stable in price, another reason why I like to trade options in Flowers is because no matter what's going on in the economy, whether it's in a recession or the economy is booming, we all have to eat. Flowers is the number two bakery company in the United States. Some of these brands lead the industry and are ranked number one for loaf and organic breads. No, it's not some high-flying, wild company, but it is one that I feel confident trading in that I know will not go out of business overnight. That matches my number one rule of investing and trading, which is to protect our capital. Flowers is just one of 250 stocks that we track on a daily and weekly basis looking for opportunities to trade options in it. Over the past year, we've only seen one opportunity to get a nice return using options and flowers when we had cash available. Here are the details on the trade that we did. On February 9th, with flowers trading right at $22.5 per share, we sold the March 22.5 put options and received 83 cents per share. Fast forward 30 days, and on March 11th, those $22.5 put options were only worth 10 cents. So we bought them back to close the position out. As you can see here, the result is that we netted 73 cents per share for the 30 days that we were in this trade. If we annualize that return, it equates to a 39.5% annualized non-leveraged cash on cash return. Again, this is a stock that at the time we sold the put option in it, it was trading for less than $23 per share. So here's a trade where you could have made about $73 in 30 days while only needing to have $2,250 cash in your account if you didn't want to use margin. Of course, you could have used margin for this position. Here you see that two days after we initiated this trade, the margin requirement was only $1,417.29 for the five contracts that we were short. So the margin requirement on this day, and keep in mind that the margin requirement changes as the stock moves around, but the margin requirement on this day was $283 per contract or per 100 shares that we were on the hook for if the put options were assigned to us. Now, I by no means am encouraging the use of margin. However, I know some option traders, myself included, when I first started trading options, like to use margin. So I thought I'd share with you what the margin requirement was on this position two days after we initiated the trade. Again, a very good return on a lower price stock. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. Let's now go into a stock that many people are familiar with, and that's AT&T. Since June of last year, or right at 11 and a half months or so, we've been selling put options in AT&T. We actually have not had any of them assigned to us as of yet. Here, where you see that white line is located at, that's the strike price that we've been selling put options at over the past year. We haven't rolled the short put option strike price up or down. We've always sold the same $30 strike price put option. If AT&T went in the money and the stock was trading for less than our short $30 strike price, then we just rolled the position out in time. As a matter of fact, as you can see here on the chart, AT&T has predominantly been trading under our short $30 strike price for almost this entire year. Now it has spiked up to right at $31.5, so we'll just have to wait and see if it comes back down to fill that gap. But again, this is another low price stock that if you have a small account, you can trade options in. Well, how much could you have made over the past year by selling put options in AT&T at $30 per share? Let me show you. Now, the account that I've been trading this position in is my main larger option trading account. However, let's just say that you've been able to get together about $3,000. 
you're looking to find a way to consistently generate some cash flow using options. How much would you have made over the past year in options with AT&T? Here you see every put option that we sold since June 3rd of last year. At the far right column that's colored yellow, you see the net cash flow from each one of those positions. At the very top, the very first line, you see that we sold the third Friday of July, $30 put option for 88 cents per share. And the next column to the right of that labeled cost to buy, we ended up buying it back on July 17th for four cents per share. So the net before commission that we pocketed was 84 cents per share. Now, if you look at the net per line for the 10 times that we have traded these put options, in all, we have pocketed $6.27 per share by rolling these put options. As of yet, none of our put options have been assigned to us, so we just have to keep rolling them out in time. I'm definitely not opposed to these options being assigned to us, but it just so happens that our limit orders have been filled that we have sitting out there in the market close to expiration. So in all, we've collected $6.27 per share on a $30 stock. One of those 10 trades that we did back on March 18th was just adding to its current short April put option position. But as you can see, you can make awesome returns and cash flow by selling options on a lower dollar stock. I want to give you one more example of a trade that you can do in a small account. This trade, if you wanted to do it without using any kind of margin or leverage, you would only need to have $2,200 to sell one put option contract. This is also a position that we are in right now. Here's the information on the stock and the trade that we did. Enterprise Products Partners, ticker symbol EPD, is a very large master limited partnership that transport and processes natural gas, crude oil, refined products, and petrochemicals. It pays a very respectable dividend, which is currently at 7.82% per year, as you can see in the blue box. So if this company does get assigned to us as a result of selling put options, we'd immediately begin selling covered calls against it and collecting that almost 8% dividend. As you can see here on April 7th, we sold to open the May 21st, $22 put options. For that, as you can see in the blue box, we received 65 cents per share. It's a position that we will be in for a little bit longer than normal because as you can see, if we stay in this position until expiration, we'll have been in it for about six weeks. However, by receiving 65 cents per share up front, we've locked in a 24.5% annualized, non-leveraged cash on cash return. As I mentioned just a moment ago, we're actually still in this position. Now again, this is the position that we've been trading in our large option trading account. So we're currently short six of the May $22 put option contracts. However, if you only had $2,200 and you didn't want to use margin or leverage, then you could just do one contract. You would have received right at $65 per contract up front when you made this trade. As you can see in the red box, you'd be up in this position because the current market price of these options is a little over 26 cents per share. As of right now, we were up 39 cents per share with about four weeks left to go on this contract. Having a smaller account does not prevent you from selling put options. And then if those puts are assigned to you, you can always turn the long stock into a covered call option position. It may limit the number of stocks you can choose from, but as you can see here, when I saw the 250 or so stocks that we actively track for opportunities, there's a pretty decent list of stocks you could potentially trade in that are under $50 per share in strike price. Any of these stocks are ones that at the right strike prices and the right conditions, I'd be willing to sell put options in them or do covered call options on them. And then if those put options were assigned to us, and the stock is put into our account, then I'd definitely begin selling covered call options against the position, as well as collecting the dividend if it's a dividend paying stock. Don't let a small account prevent you from trading options. If options trading is something that you think fits your personality and trading style, learn as much as you can about it, and then begin making safe, well thought out and understood trades. If you'd like to receive an alert as soon as we make trades similar to the trades that I talked about in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more details on how to trade put and cover call options in a small trading account, check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled, How to Trade Options Using a Small Trading Account. In that video, I talked through three of my favorite techniques that you can use to turn a small trading account into a large one. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.